You're watching Telecom TV from the SDN NFE World Congress event from The Hague. And I'm joined now by Sunil Kandikar, who is CEO of Newage Networks from Nokia. Sunil, good to talk to you again here at the SDN event every year without yeah. fail. Um, Newage has been trading now for what, about four years? Mm -hmm. What was the problem in the market that, that you saw needed to be identified and you set out to address? Yes, um, yeah indeed, this is our fourth year in the market and um, we set out right from the beginning to solve um, the meta problem which is to connect users to their applications. Users wherever they might be to the applications whether they be in the private or public cloud. And in order to do that, we had to automate networking end-to-end. -end. So we took a rather comprehensive approach in ensuring that we not only did automation in the data center for all workloads, but extended it to between the data centers and to the public SaaS clouds, as well as to the wide area and to the branch locations. And so that's what we've done. It's a rather unique approach that we have taken in the industry. But that was our thesis, that's how we started. And the success and the momentum we have is bearing that and proving that and providing a you know, tremendous validation of our approach. And in these four years, what are the, some of the types of use cases that you've been able to cover? Yeah, so you know, when um, we look at, just in the data center as an example, there is typically you have a VMware ESXi hypervisors, uh, so you have virtualized workloads that are in that environment, but then with OpenStack and KVM, you have those other sets of workloads, and then microservices architecture with containers, and of course the bare metal servers aren't going anywhere, so having a common policy layer and a declarative policy layer that automated networking regardless of the type of workload or the environment or the data center it was in was essential uh, to deliver that agility and, and tremendous efficiency as a result of the automation that we provide. And so, yeah, we, we've been doing uh, you know, intent-based uh, networking because, before it was fashionable to say it's intent-based networking because that's what we've done with our declarative policy-based uh, engine. Now, as you say, you've been trading for about four years or so, and it's only, what, four or five years since we've had with Telco NFV. Yes. Um, what, what do you think the, the impact of software-defined networking, and also SD-WAN specifically, has had on the enablement of NFV? Yeah, so, uh, as I always like to say, um, NFV is a use case of SDN. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, um, to have network functions that are virtualized, or whether it's in the universal CPE at the customer prem, or whether they are back in the data center, you need a connectivity tissue that's fungible, that's programmable, that's automated, um, that can extend and provide that web scale or scale out architecture for those VNFs. That's where a right SDN solution uh, provides that value. And so that's how the SDN and NFE will mm. get tied together, and that's how they can become reality. What do you think's been behind the, the, the growth and attraction of SD-WAN, and you know, how is your approach to SD-WAN different from others in the marketplace? Ah, great question. So SD-WAN um, started as the branch networking had stood still for over two decades, no innovation whatsoever, highly complex, bespoke, took days and months to even for a single branch to come up. SD-WAN came along and said, you know what? We are going to change the operational model, make it automated, on demand, fantastic. But what it missed is that it was only looking at branch connectivity. What we did, and we call our offer virtualized network services, what we did is we took a more broader view and said, hang on a second, those users in those branches could be in a brick or mortar branches, but they could be here in a kiosk location that also needs access as secure and as automated to the connections that they need to do back in the private data center where the applications are, or in the public data center or the SaaS data centers where the applications are. So we didn't take a rather limited view of just let's just connect branches together with a new kind of operational model. And hence I say that um, 
SD-WAN um, is really in some ways a super subset, if you will, of what VNS is. So VNS is what SDN, SD-WAN would be when it grows up. <laughs> <laughs> I like that analogy, I like that. Um, now, the market's growing up as well, the market's evolving, always continues to, to evolve. Going forward, how are we seeing the communication service provider landscape and their, their business opportunities? How are they changing and how are they evolving and how are they embracing techniques such as SD-WAN? Yeah, we expect SD-WAN to be a largely managed offering. Mm. Um, certainly, certain segment of uh, enterprises that are large enterprises, as they have been doing with IPVPNs or VPLS will continue to do their own, but largely we expect SD-WAN to be a managed service provider offering. We are seeing a tremendous amount of activity. Um, you know, Neil McRae from BT is here. He's talking about Agile Connect that they launched last week. Uh, uses a nuage, uh, and and they're rolling it out in you know sort of 30 plus countries worldwide already, and then expanding over 200 plus countries. We expect other providers, and we are engaged with many providers, not just in EMEA, but also in North America and APAC, where they're looking at complementing, initially, complementing their VPN, IP VPN portfolio that they currently have with the SD-WAN portfolio. And that's again where the ability to de-risk that by allowing the new to be connected to the old mm. in a seamless way, which we have done, gives them that capability to do the migration at their pace or serve the multinationals that might be off net to bring them in over SD-WAN and connect them to the existing IPVPN. A final question for you. We see a lot of alliances and partnerships in this industry. We talk about the ecosystem a lot. Can I talk about one of your collaborations at the moment? And that's the one with, with Intel. Why, why do you collaborate with Intel? And, and what do both parties get out of this collaboration? Yeah, so uh, we're collaborating with Intel on um, many different uh, topics. Um, server processing. Um, we use a white box for, you know, we don't have any proprietary hardware uh, in our solution at all. And so Intel's processes are in there, so we are collaborating with them for server processing, for NIC card performance, and uh, Intel also has started an initiative, uh, a very important uh, initiative, I might add, an open source initiative called Open um, Security Controller. And that what OSC is, is about helping enterprises manage their security infrastructure, because it's rather disparate, uh, it's bespoke, but you need, again, some sort of an orchestration mechanism to tie all those assets in with the new way of doing software-defined security. So that's what we are collaborating with Intel. And in fact, uh, they are showcasing Nuage at their booth here. Excellent, which will make sure that we go and, uh, and see um, exactly what it is um, you're, you're working on. But for now, Sunil, thank you very much indeed. Good to talk to you, Guy.